I do like history lessons, but in fact, I think history probably goes back on this, this issue just a little bit further than a couple of years, and I'm going to take the member for Fisher through it. Uh, I, I am grateful that this is something that we are in furious agreement about. Uh, I think the real issue is why it took so long. So let me go back and give you some real history. In 2011, uh, David Bradbury, who was then the Parliamentary Secretary to the Treasure, Treasurer, requested that the Commonwealth Consumer Affairs Advisory Council report on the consumer harm being caused by lack of access to service and repair information. So this was when cars were becoming more sophisticated. You know, it's been a long time since you've seen blokes under a car in their driveway on a Saturday morning changing the oil. It's, not so, it's something I grew up seeing, but it doesn't happen anymore. And back in 2011, um, the then parliamentary secretary, someone I, I knew well, David Bradbury, recognised there was an issue. We then got to 2014, and under the Liberals, key industry associations actually agreed to an agreement on access to service and repair information for motor vehicles. It was a heads of agreement. Now, my maths isn't great, but 2014, I think we're talking seven years ago. So there was an agreement that placed voluntary obligations on car manufacturers to, in general, share with independent repairers. And it was meant to be on a commercially fair and reasonable term. Um, that that information was sh shared, and it was to be the same technical information that they shared with dealers. So you would have thought that, that 2014, this issue would be over, and that car repairers uh, in, and services in my electorate of Macquarie, in the Blue Mountains and the Hawkesbury, would have not found themselves on an uneven playing field. But unfortunately, that scheme was a failure and it was recognised as a failure, with uh, very few car manufacturers providing access to that technical information because it was only voluntary. The one who did was Holden. They were, I'm told, a notable exception. So, so that's really where the, the problems were well and truly identified. There was a, an attempt to deal with it, but then there's been a very long lag. And I give credit to the member for Fenner mm -hmm who, uh, from my very early days here, was talking about this issue and finding a solution to this issue. And I'm very grateful that the government has listened to the advocacy from many members on this side. I can't speak for how many members on the other side have been and visited it. I haven't heard them speak about it in Parliament, and, and the minister may be able to identify some who have. Uh, but we've clearly uh, today demonstrated a long list of members on this side who feel very passionate about it with I think you know there's more than double double or triple the number of people on this side speaking in favor of this because it is so important to us and I think it belies the idea that somehow small business is something that this side of politics doesn't understand many of us have run businesses worked in small businesses, are married to people who run small businesses. Personally, I have 25 years running my own business. I grew up in small business, in a news agency. Uh, I grew up with a dad who worked seven days a week, and I know exactly what it's like when the, level, the playing field isn't level. Uh, and that's what car repairers and service, service uh, businesses have had. It's been an incredibly uh, um, unlevelled, there's got to be a better word than that, but terribly uneven playing field for them. And it is terrific to see this. Uh, it's for people like Heath and Haley, who have Windsor Ultratune, who look for creative solutions but sometimes just have to say, oh, you're going to have to take that to uh, the, the makers of the car to get that particular thing looked at. It's for people uh, like Andrew, um, and Andrew's in Blacksland at Active Automotive, and they very kindly have spent time with me explaining the issue to me. I don't can profess to have great understanding of car repair uh, um, processes. I'm very happy to hand it over to somebody, but I absolutely want to be handing it over to someone local someone I can trust, someone I run into at the shops. And that's been the he real history of, and success, I think, of local car repairs. They are part of our community. They're small business operators who we know and we build a trust. And that trust can pass from generation to generation. My children absolutely followed in my footsteps and had their cars serviced at the local providers that I used. So th I think that goes to the heart of why this 
It shouldn't have been so hard fought for. Uh, but it was recognised as an issue, and I, I, I don't have an explanation why it took so long, but I am grateful that finally, in uh, 2021, we have this issue resolved. Uh, and, and I hope that we see the benefits of it. I think that is also the test, um, to see how this plays out with our local car um, services and to talk to them about it. And of course, that's what we do regularly on this side, engage with our local small businesses, find out how things are going. That's why I know that things are really tough for some of these people. Now, for car repairs, things were pretty good during COVID, many tell me. Uh, and, uh, but then they realised people weren't driving as much, so they're seeing complete shifts in their business models. And they're the sorts of things we need to be very mindful of here as we think about support for industries when they're coping with a changing economy, when we think about how we support them to attract their new apprentices that they, that they need, how we support those apprentices to be able to go through a thorough training process. So on this side, we are absolutely delighted to see that there is a real breakthrough for a small business that is such an essential service in our community. Um, I suppose the, it is an example, if one were unkind, of, of those opposite recognising a policy and uh, borrowing it from us very heavily. We've seen that a bit this week. Um, flattery. Of course, you know, it's flattery. We take it as flattery. Um, this one, I note, has been the whole, the whole policy appears to have been incorporated in this legislation, not just cherry picked. And I think that's something I'd also commend the government on. I really like to be able to congratulate the government when it does something right. I know those occasions are few and far between. On this one, I'm very pleased uh, to be able to welcome this legislation. Uh, and I'll be very pleased to be supporting its passage through this House.